All right, Second Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, my grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. And may God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. In 2 Peter, the Apostle Peter speaks to Christians scattered through Asian Minor who were suffering persecution. Now, this letter was written in Rome sometime between A.D. 64 and 68, when Nero was on the throne in Rome. Now, if you know about Nero, he was a man without any moral principles. He was volatile in nature. And so this created an uncertain and unsteady political climate which affected the church's ability to remain steady in a place. They were, in fact, in danger every day for their lives. But also, they were in danger of being led astray by eloquent but erring teachers. And by, sinf and by a sinful style which was propagated by the culture of their day. And so when you read this letter, 2 Peter, you'll find several themes. But the key one is found in 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18, which states, Beware, but grow. Beware, but grow. Now let's read it. It says, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. I'm reading from the ESB. And lose from your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the thing. That's the key thing of the letter of 2 Peter. So here, I sense that we need to hone in on this sermon. <clears throat> Beware, but grow. Beware, but grow. Now, this week, the holidays have started. And we can see that now in the streets and in the places and even with your family, you sense this vibe. You know, our, our culture likes to call uh, a, a feeling, an experience, a vibe. You sense this vibe already in your family, at work, school. People are more relaxed to some extent. 
from the responsibilities of their everyday life. Something is in the air. Something is loose in the air. We make, we make people kind of relax on this next few weeks. They're going to relax a little bit. Your boss is going to be less strict when you come late from work or something like that happens. He's going to be less strict. Something is going on. And something is in the air that makes people change or be different in the next few weeks. And you're going to see that more and more. But there's going to be a lot of also things that as Christians, we just can involve ourselves in. We just can't. It is what I call the spirit of this world. There is that sense right now in this time. Started, it started right after Thanksgiving. Started right with Black Friday. It's going to go all the way to the end of the year. This spirit, this loose spirit of pleasure-seeking, of instability, of wildness, craziness, just things that people would not normally do. They would do it in the next few weeks. They would do it. They will practice it. People get drunk more often now, and people start drinking, and just the, the, the spirit of this world will become very, very strong in the next few weeks. Even when I was driving, from Calvary Road. There was road rage. There was cars just passing me by, left and right, on a regular Sunday afternoon. You know, usually you see that on, on Sunday night or Friday night, Saturday night. Well, right now it's everywhere. Just people driving like they're playing a video game. Everybody's just going back and forth. That spirit there, it's begin, it has begun and it's going to continue on to the end of the year. And it is this secular holiday spirit that we need to be aware of. We need to be aware of. So I'm taking the theme of this letter from 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18. When the church, the first century church in Rome was unstable because of this crazy Roman emperor Nero who was unstable and suddenly will wake up in a bad mood and say, kill all the Christians. Burn the city down. He would just do anything crazy. Same spirit that today manifests itself in the holiday spirit and whatever it is, it's the same spirit that Nero, Nero had when he just decided to say, let's just kill the Christians. Let's get rid of them. That craziness. So what, how should we respond in this time, in this season, where we are, we will begin to see this holiday spirit, this worldly holiday spirit kick in. Beware, but grow. But grow. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, 17, 18. Now, the holidays to us is Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year. To the rest of the world, it's the holidays. To us, it means more than just a day to get drunk. To mean, to us, Thanksgiving is thanking our God. To us, Christmas is the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. To the world, it's another opportunity to, to give each other gifts and get drunk and just party just party the new year's 
again, to us, is another celebration to thank God for what he has done in the year and for, and for what he will do in the following year. So in, in a way, we celebrate Thanksgiving twice. If you're a Christian, we, we, what, is, I mean, what do we celebrate in the new year? We celebrate the new year. And how do we celebrate it? We give thanks. That's how we do it. That's how Christians celebrate. It's not just another day to get drunk. To us, it's a day to give thanks for what he has done and for what he will do. And we spend, yes, our time with our families and everything else, and we, and we, and we love our brothers and our sisters, and we share our love, but we give thanks. We, we, we as Christians are a contrast are a contrast to the world, and we ought to be a contrast to the world, especially in this season. Because you want to better your witness, you want to be a better witness to the world, this is how we do it. We have to be a contrast. See, the world will not see any reason to listen to you, to follow you, if you ain't different. Remember, they are following the trend of the world. The world is following the world. We are going against everything that the culture, that the world is pushing in our minds, is pushing in our hearts. It's telling us this is how you had to be. We are going against it. And Peter is doing that. He's about to die. He's, he, Nero is on his throne. He is saying, we're going to persecute the Christians. We're going to get rid of them. They're... They are dangerous. They are a danger to the state. They're the enemy. Let's get rid of them. Peter is about to be killed. And so he writes this letter in the midst of the persecution to make the Christians, to help the Christians see what they have to do, to prepare them for, for, to be persecuted and to prepare them to deal with all this evil that is out there rampant the, the the teachers teaching false doctrine and 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 the world the greek world which was just a debauchery every day they just lived and had sex and 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 there was prostitution it was just crazy so peter is telling the christians there nation minor here this is how you have to be this is how you have to be this is how you gotta be so that you can be a contrast and so that you can more than anything, please your God. Please your God. Yes. So, Peter is exhorting us. Peter is exhorting us in this chapter. Now, I will speak a short message. I'm not going to make it very long. But I'm going to really focus on this passage of Scripture. Okay, so don't be afraid because the passage seems to be long. You might think, whoa, he's going to preach a two-hour message here. No, I'm not. But, but it's a long passage, but there's a lot of things here that we can learn and that we can apply so that you can prepare to live accordingly to Scripture during the holidays but also so that you can be a better witness to your families, to your friends, to your neighbors. Okay? That's important. Now, the passage of Scripture that I'll be reading is from 2 Peter 5, which we already read. 2 Peter 1, from 5 to 10. So let's read. I think it will be in the screen. For this very reason... As partakers of his divine nature in verses 4. Remember, in verse 4 we read that we have been saved and as partakers of his divine nature. So if you're a Christian, God, Christ has given you a new nature, has given you a new heart. So for this very reason, because you are partakers of a new, a divine nature. Listen to this. Make every effort to supplement or add to your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge 
in knowledge with self-control, in self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. Four, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, maturing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Which qualities? The ones mentioned above. You see? So first, in this holiday season, let us be diligent to abound in graces that will make us fruitful in the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of Christ. Second Peter, t Peter 1, 5 to 7. Make every effort. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. And virtue with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with steadfastness. And steadfastness with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours... And are increasing. They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, brothers and sisters. The Apostle Peter is exhorting us to be diligent to add to our faith. Your saving faith. Your saving faith. I mean, you're talking to a Christian. Faith here is saving faith. To add to your saving faith. Virtual Knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, bro brotherly kindness, and love. For by abounding in these graces, we grow in the knowledge of Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter is teaching us here. That's how we grow. By adding, abounding, virtual, knowledge. Self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Now he mentions, so he mentions eight graces. And let me just very briefly define them as we know them. What is faith? Faith is the substance of hope, conviction. Obviously, saving faith. When Christ, when we came to Christ... God gave us saving faith to come and trust Christ. It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That's the conviction. Now to our faith, to our saving faith, we need to add virtual. That means we need to add moral excellence, goodness. Moral excellence, goodness. It doesn't say to be perfect, it says to add. It says to, to supply, to grow, to mature in moral excellence and goodness. It means to add to our faith knowledge. What is knowledge here? It's correct insight on the Word of God. It means that we need to be on the Word of God. We need to be reading the Word of God. We need to be interacting with the Word of God. We need to be challenging ourselves with the Word of God. How many of you challenge yourself in the Word of God? When you read something that you know you're not at par, do you challenge yourself? Do you challenge yourself? Do you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it this year to, to really battle against this, this weakness I have. I'm going to just battle against it. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what comes in the way. I'm going to battle against this. And I'm going to overcome. I'm going to be an overcomer. How many of you have that kind of interaction with the world, God, that it leads you to so much of a change? How many of you have that? Correct insight, understanding the world, God. Filling yourself with knowledge from the world, God. At supply to your faith, to your saving faith, knowledge. 
from the word of God. Self-control. Another grace. Self-control. Here it means self-discipline. How many of you are self-disciplined? Reading the word of God. I know some of you know the word of God so well you can spit Bible verses left and right. Really? Are your discipline? Are your discipline in applying it and living out what you spew out from your knowledge? This 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 is speaking to of living out what you know. Do you have self-discipline to obey what you read? To obey God's word. See? It's more than just mental knowledge. Steadfastness. Here means standing firm under trial. Standing firm under trial. Godliness. Having a godly character. Out of devotion to God. Out of devotion to God. Godly character. Do you have godly character? When you read the word of God, do you see the attributes there from Christ speaking to you? You need, you need to be, you, you know you need to be more godly, but you're not. The apostle Peter says to act, to supply godliness to your saving faith. To supply godliness to your saving faith. Yes, you're saved. Yes, you know Jesus. But do you add godliness to your saving faith? Are you striving to be more godly? Brotherly affection means love to where your brethren. Are you striving? Maybe as soon as people go back home, a lot of people perhaps they go to the TV, watch something, and you forget about your brothers and sisters. Monday to Saturday is my time. Sunday is for my brothers and sisters. Is that your attitude? We don't hear from you. Any time throughout the week, but we see you on Sunday here. Is that brotherly affection? No. That's not brotherly affection. So Peter says, okay, you have saving faith. Now add brother, brotherly affection. Now add brotherly affection. Okay. You have saving faith. Great. Now add brotherly affection. Supply brotherly affection. Love. It's an active, an active goodwill Towards those in need. Here in the in the Greek, mean the, the word love here means an active, means an action, an active goodwill toward those in need. Add to your saving faith an active goodwill toward those in need. Now it says not just to add, but he said this: if they increase. Right? If they continually increase, right? If they continually abound, then what? Then you will grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yes. Second Peter 1 8 says, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, what qualities? The eight one the eight that I just described. If these qualities are yours and are increasing, abounding. Then you are growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So in other words, we need to abound, flourish in these eight graces. And only then can it be said that we're growing. Think about it. Eight graces. And only if we are continually growing on all eight of them, then we can confirm that we are growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So growing in grace, maturing as a Christian, is something more than simply increasing our intellectual knowledge. That's what Peter is confirming. We need to be abounding in these graces. Your Bible devotion... It's not going to do it. You need to indeed practice 
live out those graces. Now, the Bible does, does say that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we are in, indeed, obviously, we need to be under the preaching of God's word. And all of you are under the preaching. And, and, and all of you perhaps read your Bibles. But notice, that's just one, one of all the eight graces. That is one of all the eight graces. You're not going to grow in the knowledge of Christ by just listening to a sermon. You're not going to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ by doing your devotional. No. Virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. Ooh, that's hard. You see how quickly, how, e how quickly we, can just, we, we could be deceived a lot of times and we think, oh, we're, we're doing great. We're, we're showing up to church. But look what Peter is telling the Christians. We want to be like the first century church. We're trying to be like, we're trying to model. We want to be like the, the early saints that follow Christ to the cross. But the question is, does you, do, do you really want to follow them? And are you willing to count the cost? To be more like them. You see? Peter is telling us what we need to do to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We need to add virtue. We need to add knowledge. We need to add self-control. We need to add steadfastness. We need to add godliness. We need to add brotherly affection. We need to add love. It's not enough to pat ourselves in the back and we came to church and we heard the sermon. It's not enough to just say, well, I show up to Central Avenue. It's not enough to say, well, I just read my devotion. Are we growing in these virtues? Are we growing in these graces? But also notice the word supplement or supply here in 2 Peter 1.5. This Greek word here implies that we need to develop in these graces in conjunction with each other. So the idea here, according to Peter, is that each grace is to tamper and make perfect the grace that goes before it. Let me illustrate this. Let's take the example of knowledge. At supply knowledge. Let's add self-control. So the grace of self-control enables one to apply properly the knowledge one has. So you have knowledge and self-control. So we'll add, add self-control now. Okay, well, if I have knowledge, it could only be enabled if we apply properly self-control. And then to self-control, you add or you supply steadfastness, which means that now you add consistency to your steadfastness. So it doesn't help you that you have self-control occasionally, in other words. Now you need to have consistency. That's what the Apostle Peter is saying. Oh yeah, I was, I, you know, I handled the situation pretty well. I was in self, -con I, I was under control. Really? It says consistency. Now, now to your self-control, you need consistency. Add steadfastness. And then it goes on. From virtue to knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, love. In the Greek, these graces follow each other in conjunction with each other. You see, it's not just, well, I have knowledge of the Bible, but I don't have self-control. Okay, brother, you need self-control. Uh, I'm steadfast. But I'm not very, you know, godly. Oh, now you need to add godliness. That's how it is. It's not enough that, I, hey, I, I have one thing right. No, you're not. You don't have anything right. To grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you need all eight of them. And you need to be growing consistently. And be consistent for you to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what Peter is getting at. 
So, brothers and sisters, we have a lot of work to do, right? That just, that just tells you how much work you, need, you, you have. I have a lot of work to do. If we want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of prayer. Time, a, lot, a lot of time that we need to spend in prayer. Because, honestly, we can't do this with our own strength. You need, you need Jesus Christ. I mean, we have saving faith, right? Notice, the, 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 the chapter begins, you who have, who have become a partaker of the divine nature. It's speaking to a Christian who already has the divine nature of Christ. You who are a partaker of it, now do this. Now you could be enabled to do this, but you need to work at it. You need to make effort, put effort, right? That's why it says that. Now you understand why it says, well, that sounds like work salvation. No, it doesn't say work salvation. It's not teaching work salvation. Peter is not talking about work salvation here. He's saying faith, saving faith, add to your saving faith, disgraces. Make every effort to supplement. Make every effort. Now you need to work. Work out your salvation. You know, you need to work out your salvation. You see? That's how you grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, second, this holiday season, let us beware to guard our hearts against being tempted by the world's spirit. Yes, Peter tells us, for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted, unable to see things clearly, that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. So obviously, that zeroes in to a Christian. A Christian can forget that he's a Christian, that he's saved, that his sins have forgiven. You, if you lack these qualities, the, qual the eight qualities that I mentioned. Whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted. That's scary. Nearsighted. Unable to see things clearly. That he is blind. Having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. We need to walk carefully. Because brothers and sisters, we can stumble. If we don't work out our salvation with fear and trembling, if we don't put into account, if we don't take this passage of Scripture and start adding, supplying to our saving faith these graces, we are going to be so nearsighted, so unable to see things clearly, that we will be blind and we will forget. We will forget, we will forget easily that we have been saved. A Christian could be walking so close to the world, you can't even tell he's a Christian anymore. You can't backslide so bad that nobody will recognize you. you nobody won't recognize you as a Christian. And what's going to happen to your witness, especially during the Christmas? I'm just going to share this story here. I had a friend that um, became a Christian. And he was a Christian for, he's been a Christian for a long, long time. And one day he went to a Christmas party. After 15 years of being a Christian, serving the Lord and everything. Guess what happened to this, this friend of mine's testimony in that Christmas party? Got destroyed. What happened? He just drank a little bit more than usual. He went to a party. It was just a Christmas party. You mean to say he ruined 15 years of being a Christian? Yes, he did. His testimony got ruined there. And guess what social media did? Took all the pictures and videos of all the crazy things he did, and everybody on social media saw him and behaving in a way that it was, it was not Christian at all. Think about it. Think what, happened, think what happened to his Christian witness. You say, oh, you're trying to scare me. Yeah, I'm trying to scare you. you say, well, I'm not going to get scared about that. Well, it doesn't matter because you're the one who's going to ruin your witness. Okay? Your Christian testimony. 
You're the one that's going to be on social media. You're the one that people are going to say, this guy's not a Christian. And you will become ineffective in the ministry, useless to God. You will become ineffective because people, at least the people who are there seeing that, will not trust you anymore, will not listen to you anymore. Because you just decided to just follow a little bit of the world. Just a little bit. Took a little bit of extra drinks. Took a little bit more drinks than you should have. You see? We need to be careful that we don't ruin our, our Christian testimony for just going a little bit easy than usual, being, not being so firm with ourselves. We have to be careful with the Christian witness. Look at what Peter's saying here. If we lack these qualities, and that could be that we falter, that can mean that we falter, we might, we might trickle down, it might affect us to the extent where we are blinded and we behave in a way that we should have not. So we need to be careful on this time of age especially in the holidays. But we should be always careful, always careful, and we should practice these qualities. Virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, love. And we should be increasing, abounding in these qualities. You see? If we do that, we will grow in the knowledge of Christ but not only we will grow in the knowledge of Christ, we will be a better witness. We will be a more effective witness as we try to win our loved ones. As we go out there and we preach the gospel. As we go out there and, 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 and just be sold out for the ministry. As we do that, okay, as we do that and we practice these graces, we will be more effective. People will respond, will see our brotherly love, our consistency in what we preach, consistency in what we say as we walk the talk. Very important. We should not forget for the reason for the season. We should not forget that. I know my, some of my relatives are going to celebrate their holidays. But I'm not going to be afraid to bow down and pray for the food. If they don't want to do it, that's fine. But I'm going to do it anyways. I'm not going to shy away from when people ask me on Christmas, what are you celebrating? I'm celebrating the birth of my Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be afraid of that. If they want to celebrate something else, that's fine. But I'm celebrating the birth of of my Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, let's, let's be an effective witness. And then love them. And when they see that, hey, we die fair here, but man, that brother really loves me. You know, he really cares for me. I mean, he goes out of his way to go get a bunch of Cokes, and, and he went out of his way to get the chicken, and he went out of his way to love me. Now they're going to be like, well, he's, he's a devoted Christian, and you know, he's religious, I'm not. He's fanatic, I'm not. But, you know, he, he, I mean, I want to invite this guy here because we really have a good time. He really cares for us and loves us, right? We want to be an effective witness. But if we're going to be a witness, we have to stand firm to our faith and abound in these graces, abound in these graces, because that's how we're going to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we going to be persecuted more? Yes. But are we going to be more effective? Yes. Okay? Yes, we're going to be more effective. When you are persecuted, it means you're effective. Let God do the rest. Let God work on these people's hearts. God is not powerless. He's still on his throne. Don't shy away for your... For your call you know sit just be still and know that God is on his throne and 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 celebrate but 
being aware of what we're dealing with here in our world, in this country, in this land, and in city. Remember, beware, but grow. Beware, but grow. Read the Bible. The way to grow starts by reading the Bible. You say, why do you keep saying that? I, I, I just look at how many people contribute when I write the devotion. I, I see how many people just, I, I always ask a question like, um, you know, please feel free to share. Please feel free to share how, what you learned from your devotional. And you say, well, people are busy. Okay. It's been one month, two months, three months. Since Pastor Chan started all these devotions, I don't, I don't get any texts. I hardly get any texts other than from the same people that I usually get from. But everyone else, it makes me wonder sometimes. Like, we don't, we're not, I, I, I set up other chat rooms and, and I get, I mean, I wake up and there's 20 responses. I mean, the everyone's group, the prayer, I get everybody to respond. That's beautiful. But when it comes down to the Bible, nobody responds. I wish that the, the Bible chat was as alive as the prayer chat. Because people are concerned. And I, see, the, the, our, 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 here, our brothers and sisters are concerned about each other. I, there's no question about that. But when it comes down to the Bible, just opening the Bible and sharing, nobody texts, nobody texts us back. Nobody shares anything. So what can I say? We, if you're going to grow, this is an area where you need work. You need to grow in this area. Not so much the prayer, because I see the prayer chat is pretty active. The Bible. Why are you not active as a life when it comes down to your Bible rings, to Bible devotionals. Why? Are you reading your Bibles? Are you not? You're not going to grow. Remember, one of the graces is knowledge. You're not going to have correct insight. You're not going to have correct discernment on how to help people, on how to make disciples, on how to witness, unless you get that right. I'm not here to hammer you on every point. I'm here to hammer you in where you're weak at. You are not as alive, as vibrant in your Bible devotionals. Because if you were, you would, you, I mean, you can't help it. But to put it online, to have your brothers and sisters hear it. When I prepare a sermon, I'm excited about preaching. Even if my English is not the greatest, I'm excited about what I learned. Why are you not excited about what you learned? Why? That's our weakness here. If you don't believe me, go to the chat and read it and see if you find yourself somewhere there. No. That's a weakness. We need to grow in that area. And Pastor Chan, Said all this is up. I'm so happy that he just saw it from the beginning. Brother, we, we, we're not going to grow and we're not going to be effective in, in our witness if our bro brothers and sisters do not know the Bible. You can't discern. You're not going to know God's will if you're not reading the Bible. You see? That's our weakness. Prayer's great. Bible reading? No. We need to really work at it as you get as you know as you find out more in the bible about christ you will fall in love with him more and more you will grow in your faith you will see things that you didn't see before you will get cl clarity in your walk with christ you will see error in the world, you will know how to walk, what you do in every situation. Because you are in the Word. 
That's one of the graces that Peter makes that clear. There's eight graces. We need to grow in all of them. But this is where I see a problem here collectively, corporately as a church, in a Bible devotions. And I'm sure Pastor Chan will agree with me on this point. Okay? We need to grow in this area. All of us need to grow. And don't be afraid. Well, so you have 40 years of knowledge or this brother has 30 years and whatever I say, it can't be much. I mean, I'm only being a Christian for six months. That doesn't matter. God speaks through babes in Christ. At times, I've been corrected by babes in Christ. Just, just let go. However, in whatever way God speaks to you through your Bible, the Lord says, just let go. Share. I want to know what God is showing you through Scripture. It helps me. It helps Pastor Chan. It helps the community. It helps the church. We need to grow in this area. So in this holiday season, let us beware to guard our hearts against being te tempted by the world's spirit. Okay? That's very, very important. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. Thy word. The word of God have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How are you going to hide the word of God in your heart if you're not reading the Bible? If it's not entering your mind, it's not going through, your, through the system in your mind, through the categories of your mind, and it's not entering the heart. You're going to sin. You're, gonna, you're not going to know what to do. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Those are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, watch and pray. We need to watch and pray in this time of season that you may not enter into temptation. That you, you may not be tempted to go to the world to, to, to be mesmerized by the trinkets that sparkle here in this world when you go to the Americana, when you go to the malls and the different places when you see the beer and the people partying and then that you don't get mesmerized and think this is this is the way of life i mean this is pretty boring here this is more exciting we have to be careful watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation okay that you may not enter into temptation the bible says draw near to god and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. James 4, 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. See, you will know that if you don't read the Bible. You need to, this, this is found in James 4, 8. You see? You need to read the Bible. So that when you read this chapter, when you feel so, so separate, oh, I, I'm a sinner, I just sin, and I just feel awful. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. See, that's a word of comfort to a sinner who is under conviction. Who is under conviction. You see? Remember, we need to add these graces to our saving faith. And so we need to fill ourselves with the knowledge of God. We need to fill ourselves with the knowledge of God. 2 Peter 1.10 says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. It doesn't say that you will never fall into sin. It says that it will confirm of your calling and election. That means your assurance. It will confirm your calling and election. And that, what does that do? It, it gives you assurance. You don't need to be asking, well, am I among the, am I among, one among, among the elect? I mean, I don't know. How do I know I'm among, among the elect? Well, here it is. If you practice these qualities, you will never fall. It will become an assurance. It will be an assurance to you that you're among the elect. Because you are growing in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the evidence of that knowledge it's reflected in practicing these qualities. 
as a style of life. Not one day, and then six months later, I'll do another one as a style of life. You need to grow and keep growing. Keep increasing. Okay, that's what Peter is telling us here. So, I hope this sermon was helpful to you. I really pray hard for this sermon as I prepare for it. And I say, and I was thinking about every single one of you. What is one thing? I mean, there's eight graces, there's, but what is one thing that our people need? And you can see how space-minded I am because I had to really pray and think about it, even though it was right in my phone. And, I, and then God told me, <laughs> look at the Bible. The Bible chat. And I saw and I go, oh, I don't need to ask any more questions. I, I, I don't need to. I, I know what the problem is. And this, it, it, we have to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to grow in, in, in the Bible. We need to know this book. We need to know it. And we need to live it. Or we won't be an effective witness. And we will be all tossed to and fro. We will lose our assurance. We're not going to know if we're safe or not. We're going to be asking we're just going to be all over the place. We need to be grounded in the word. We need to m make it a habit every day to, to interact with the word of God. And everything else in, in the eight, there's eight graces there. We need, to, we need to keep increasing, growing in all these things. But as a church corporately, in the Bible, in the Bible, in keeping up with our Bible readings, in our devotional, in our time alone with God. That's very important. And I want to end here. I know that some of you here do not know our Lord Jesus Christ. My question to you is, are you prepared to meet thy God? Are you prepared to meet your God? He is your God, even if you say, well, I'm not saved. He couldn't be my God. No, he's your God still, even if you're not saved. Are you prepared to meet thy God? The Bible says, the Bible teaches that you are going to die, and one day you will face God. Are you prepared? To meet thy God. If you're not, I want to speak to you. I just want to speak to you, have a conversation with you. It won't be long. And, and let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And that's where I will end. Let's stand and pray. We'll prepare our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for speaking to us through thy word. I pray that hearts were touched through thy word. I pray that thou wouldest help us, Father, everyone in Zoom, everyone here, to think about what they heard, to meditate on thy word, to meditate on this letter in Second Peter, to think, to be aware of their surroundings, to be aware that we're not in, in a playground, but we are in a, in, in a real battleground here for the souls of men, for our own souls, for thy namesake. Help us, Father, in this holiday season to be a, real, a true and effective witness of Christ. Help us to keep ourselves close to thee in this time to meditate on the word to grow in thy word in the knowledge of thee to grow in these graces and that we will be a, a better example a, a, a clear a, a better witness God with our lives and, our, and with our testimony to the lost world so that they will ask us that for that they will uh, see that, that, they, that we're different and that 
that there's something in us different that they will want to know, that they will want to find out what is, and that through our lives and through our testimony, we will be able to witness Christ and give them Christ, Father. Help us, Father, to be loving and, and caring for our relatives, for our friends, for strangers, for our neighbors in this time of season. Help us to, to make disciples in our church and help, help us to, to bring people, God, to come hear the gospel, to come hear thy word preach. Help us, bless us and when we go to the college campuses this week, when we go to Central Avenue, when we go to different places, help us to keep this eight graces in mind and help all of us to grow like thou has commanded us to grow and to live out these graces and to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ as we read thy word, as we engage with thee through thy word because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.